So, good afternoon, everybody. You guys having a good time at the first ever Angular conference? This is pretty cool, huh? These guys have done a great job with everything so far. I'll tell you, it's the, probably the best first time event I've ever been to before. <laughs> and yes, that was the guy who runs the event. <laughs> All righty, so what we're gonna talk about here over the next 19 and a half minutes is progressive saving. How to save data in your applications. And the first thing you might be thinking is, well, I already know how to save some data, so what are you possibly gonna tell me that may be of interest? Well, stick around for a bit. We'll talk about some things here. First, if you have any questions afterwards, I guess we'll be outside, or you can always contact me on Twitter or my blog. And everything you're going to see in this demo today, you can actually check out online at this URL. So feel free to hit it. Uh, please not during the session, though. So how do you handle saving inside of an Angular app and make it really awesome for user experience? Well, it's all about the whip, work in progress. Maybe you want to have a user who's using your application and while they're doing that, they might have to juggle multiple tasks. Does any of you here ever juggle multiple tasks at a time? Yeah, we all do. So when you do that, it's not always as simple as a basic to-do app that we see where you just type data in and it automatically just happens to save. All data is always valid. There's never a problem with data. Users never have an ent issue entering our information. So if it's so easy, then why do we have a talk about it? Well, life happens. Things go wrong. Sometimes you just have to have a situation where you can handle what's going on with my data. It's in valid state. I've got to do three things at one time. So one thing that could possibly happen is you could close the browser by accident. How many times are you entering a data entry form on the web, maybe ordering something from Amazon, and you hit the wrong X in the browser tab, you're trying to get rid of some tabs, all of a sudden everything's gone. You kind of do one of these moments, you know? Just doesn't feel so good. Or, you know, you're working at a, a company and you get one of those uh, interactions with the user and they're saying, you know, we have to be able to handle multiple calls at the same time for order entry. We need to be able to juggle multiple tasks. So maybe an urgent call comes in while you're filling out some information and you have to switch gears. But you automatically want to save the data that you have so you don't lose your place. Well, juggling these tasks is kind of important. So we need to make sure we're not juggling chainsaws and kittens are a little bit better. So how do we handle these saving situations? Well, there's definitely some options. And like anything in life, there are good options and not so good options. So when faced with these, what do you do? Do you cut the rope? Well, some of these options are clearly going to be better than others. So option A, let's look at some options we've got. You can leave, let the user leave and lose all their changes. They love that. You know, losers, users love it when they enter data and then you just like make it disappear. They just have a great experience. Another option is you cannot leave. Don't let them leave that screen until everything has been entered and saved or canceled. Well, just another situation where they're not so happy all the time. We can do this, though. We see another situation where we have automatically save everything as you're typing, using some kind of a throttling situation. Well, that works pretty cool. And there's a variation on this that I really enjoy. And it works great for simple apps. But when you have to save data as a coherent whole, like you want to save a full order, all the information about that order, you want to make sure that you get all that data and save it. But if you're saving as you type, maybe you're not putting in all the required fields, so how do you save half of an order? Your DBA is not going to like it if you say, hey, just go remove all the constraints in the database for me. It'll make my life easier. Yeah, it doesn't work so good. So if the data is incomplete or it's invalid, well, that's not going to work out so well for you. So while you're running away from your DBA, you have the other option, which is just give up, right? Well, what do we do in this situation? We use WIP, work in progress. So let's talk about what WIP is going to do for us. First, we want to make sure we handle the stories that are important to saving with work in progress. And for that, we're going to first listen for the changes. We need to know when do we want to stash those changes. And I'm going to call it stashing because we're not saving to the database. We're stashing these off locally so that the user can continue on their merry way with their application. Then we want to be able to save and stash off that WIP automatically. So we need to know when to save it, and then when and how to do it. We need to know how to get back to that WIP later. How do we get back to that state that we were in? Not just the data they entered, but the state of the entity. And then any changes of before and after, because what if they come back to that data and then realize they want to revert? What does reverting even mean? And kind of an important piece here is telling the user about it. All this is wonderful unless you tell the user how to use it. 
So there has to be a lot of good visual indicators and a really good user experience to using the WIP. So with that, let's take a look at one way that we can do this with a sample application that we put together for a, an event. And for this event, we've got a lot of sample sessions that are right here from ng-conf. Flip over. And this is the same live demo that you can run from the link that I showed in one of the first slides. So here we have an event, and we can see up here John Lindquist's boot camp right up top. We've got some other cool sessions, and there's some crazy guy in a cowboy hat. I hope I don't run into him here at the conference. Uh, and this, with this thing here, we can type in information like, let's go find John Papa. There he is. We'll click on one of his sessions. And let's say that I want to change the title of my session because it's just way too long up here. So instead, I'm just going to put up here, it's called Spa. That's it. And then I'm typing through here, and oh, man, I accidentally hit the browser tab. Before I do that, let's just copy the URL. I accidentally close out my tab. I then do the face plant into the computer, just like that lady did in my slide. I come back into the browser. I type up the local host. I come in here and I go back to the session screen. Now let's take a pause for a moment. The second session listed on here is the one that I just edited. Notice it's still got the old title in there. That's because I made a conscious choice to say, you know what, while I'm in the middle of processing and changing data, I don't want anybody else to really see this except for the screen that I'm editing on. I could do that if I wanted to because Angular will do the great data binding. But I chose not to in this case, so when I come back in, now notice the title. The title has saved my work in progress and sees that I have Spa as the new title here. So not so bad. So now, oh, hold on here. So I can see I'm in the room Venice. Maybe I don't really want to be in Venice in this case. So I'm going to change that down there and, uh, you know, come back and edit. And let's see here. I'll change that room up to Santa Anita. And then I'm going to, I don't know, maybe I'll go to another session and make some changes too. But uh, maybe I'll, let's say I add a new session here. John, John, I got a session for you. I want a, se a session I want you to add. It's my session. I just got it. Brad just gave me the authorization. How to dress for an Angular conference. Uh, I, I think it needs an hour. He gave me an hour, an hour on that. I want you to stop what you're doing. Stop. I, just stop. It's okay. I've only got 20 minutes. No problem. They, they, they'll wait. They'll wait. Right, come, right. come on. Put my right. session in. Put my should session I, in. Should I listen to this guy for a few minutes? What do you think? No? <laughs> all right, well, all right, fine. If it gets you off stage, I'll add your session now. All right. So let's Don't worry on. about the stuff you're already working on. <sighs> this never happens in real life. That's right. good, John. That's really good. We're going to add a session to ng-conf. What do you want it to be called? Uh, dress for success at Angular. Dress for success with Angular. Yeah, yeah, because right. Angular's really good at, at dressing you up. All right, and we'll put you in a track called Fun, because that's not that's, what you are. It, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, then we'll go down here and select a person, and hopefully you're in this list. Hey, there you are, Ward Bell. What a wow, great Wow, wow, I, I look just like that too, John. Uh, yeah, this is security. great, John. This is going fabulous. Security. You're not getting that session. Oh, come on, man. All right, good. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience here. Hopefully, give me a couple minutes back on the session. But you can see this happens a lot in real life where you've, you're doing Don't mess something. with my session, John. You come back over. I'll add it, sir. No problem. There's a nice padded cell in the back room. So we're adding a session. Things are changing. You've got to switch gears. I was in the middle of changing my own stuff. And now I'm in the middle of changing wards. Do we know which one do I finish? Do I finish this one? Do I go back to mine? Well, one of the things we can do is we can flip over to a screen here called Work in Progress. And notice now I've got a screen showing me all the changes that I've made throughout this process. Up here I changed something about John's session. And then I had one here where I changed my title to Spa. And then I just added this crazy guy's session down here for Dress for Success. Notice the state is also tracked in the time when it happened. So this is one way we can enter right back into it. So I can go back and finish up Ward's session. And thankfully, Joe is telling me, you know, I don't have to actually add the session, so we're going to kill it. Just don't tell Ward. So we're going to kill this off, but first we notice that we've got our validation on this page now. Notice I was able to save this session off. Work in progress stopped, said, okay, I'll take what you've entered, I'll save it to uh, store it in local stash here, and when it comes back to the screen, it's telling me other information about why this is invalid. I couldn't save this to the database if I wanted to as work in progress because it's not valid. The database would say, sorry, sir, it's not going to happen. So down here I've got the information that I had, but now I can go in here and just say, you know what, cancel this guy. And when I did that, you hear a whine from the audience, and you'll notice a little toast in the upper right-hand corner. 
It's a little mess I have there saying it's updated WIP. So if I go back now over here to work in progress, there is no more ward. Ward's gone. It's out of the list. So we're able to add WIP on the fly and remove it as soon as I canceled those changes. If I save the changes, it'll also get removed from WIP as well. So we can see different things that we can add and move around. So let's go back to my session now, right from here. We can type information in, and you know, if I want to change all this information and then save it, one of the things we'll see after I do the save is the work in progress. Right down here, it changes to number one. Why? Because I had two changes, now I have one. So when I cancel or when I save, we remove it from that entity. So let's take a look here inside of the browser at the resources. This is awesome on 1024 resolution, by the way. All right, so we have a resources tab, and we're inside looking at local storage. Really, we are. Double click. So let me move this guy over. I still have one guy left in WIP, and what I've got here is I've got a couple keys that I'm saving off to local storage. There's two of them for me. One's a GUID, which is fun to read, and then the other one's just the title of CC Angular Breeze, it's the name of my app. And what the second one does is it shows the information of the summary of all the work in progress. Why do I need a summary? Because if I save off, let's say, 50 records to work in progress, and I have a single entry using a GUID inside of local storage, if I ever want to show a screen that shows all the work in progress, I don't want to have to iterate through every single item in uh, local storage to do that. So I also save off just a summary record and say, here's all the information that's here in local storage so I can get back to it later. So this guy always lives for me and shows me the information. And that's what drives that work in progress summary screen, which is going to be, let's go back and look at it, right over here. So I can look up there really quickly and see what's going on. And then each individual item is saved off to local storage inside the GUID. So if I go back into here and open up that guy, we'd see in here information about the version of the, of the app that I'm using, and then the information to session. There's the title, Boot Camp with Egghead. We just keep moving on. So I've got all the state in there. And what's being saved is the state of the entity, what kind of entity is it, like a session, and then information about the before and after state. And that's important because remember, when I canceled Ward's changes here, the session he wanted me to add, I had to have a place to go back to when I canceled. In that case, it was going back to just the entity didn't exist because it was new. But if I was changing my entity and wanted to revert it, I'd have to have a way I can go back. So let's do that to the final work in progress. Here I have some changes that I made in here. I turned the title from bootcamp with egghead to bootcamp with egghead.123. If I want to cancel this, I need to know what was the original state. So I can come in here now and click on cancel, and it all gets reverted. And notice down here the visual indicators turn off. So if we satisfied the things that we wanted to do for our users, we basically wanted to make sure we had the visual indicators, we wanted to make sure we could save off and do it automatically. But the key is making sure we know how do we technically do this. Where does Angular come in? What else the features are we using? Well, we're using local storage inside of the browser. We're taking advantage of some features of a library called breeze.js, which allows us to do rich data in the client. And it allows us to really easily, with Angular, import entities or export entities out of its local cache. So when I want to save data off to local storage, work in progress, I just use this export entities feature and say, go ahead and grab all the entities that I have or just the one that I'm looking at now and save that off, serialize it, and then stick it in local storage. And then I can rehydrate it when I need to. I'm using some Angular directives to help notify and put some visual indicators up for the user when those changes occur so they can know how many in-process records that they have. And it's all working with some Angular services that I wrote, some custom services to help with work in progress. So there are four main questions you have to ask yourself when you're dealing with work in progress in the application. First of all, how do you know when to stash? Well, looking at this code here, it's going to help us understand when we can automatically trigger the saving off the local storage. So here we have is Breeze has this thing called an entity manager. It manages all of our entities inside of our application. And it sounds like a big fancy word, an entity manager, but basically it's just a container around all the POJO objects, all of our basic JSON objects inside of our Angular app. And then there's a line of code in here which says, just listen to the entity changed event. Breeze will tell us when the entity has been changed. And if it was a property change, I'm then going to rebroadcast out, using Angular, a message saying, 
an entity has changed. So when that message goes out, you might think, all right, that's when I need to know to save this thing off. Somebody changed an entity. So then how do you export it? Well, a simple line of code to use the entity manager again from Breeze to say, export my entities. I pass in one or more entities that I want to export. In my case, I'm doing one at a time. But you can pass in an array, as many as you want. And then you tell it for you to include the metadata or not with that. There's information in the metadata. This is optional, if you'd like. That talks about what other kind of properties and validation that that entity has. So this is going to serialize the entity and its changes and its state, not just taking the JSON object. It's taking the state and the changes, too. And that's what we saw over here in local storage. So then how do we import it back? It's kind of important once you say something to be able to get back to it. Well, first, we could just use HTML5 local storage. We use the Angular's access to it to get that item. Then we'll just import one entity using the import entities method. So all right, go get that data local storage, pull it in to the manager. Now I have all my objects. And then if I'd like to, I can actually access those because it's just an array of entities. And then I could take the entity and return it to a controller and show it on the screen, a screen using Angular. Very, very simple. And then kind of more important pieces here, which often gets left off sometimes, is how do you let the user know what's going on? This is where I'd like to use directive. Basically, I put a directive together to say, I wanted to have a menu item that's really just going to show people not only how do you get to the screen to show me all the work in progress, but how do I update the asterisk to turn it orange when it's changed, to light up the number of how many records are in progress at the time. So for that, I created a little bit of a directive here. And I call it CC Whip because the name of the app was Code Camper. And for that, I have two things I have to tell it. Well, to understand how work in progress is going to work, you have to tell it where is the work in progress. So I pass into this my WIP data. And that comes off my controller, right on the scope. And then I tell it, when you need to listen to this event, that's when you need to update the information in this directive. So it's telling you here, here's a custom event that you're going to be broadcasting using Angular. When that event comes across, listen to this, please, and then update yourself. And one of the things I like about Angular with directives is that you can write a directive such as more modular and more reusable. For example, I could have just hard-coded into the directive where to get the WIP and what event to listen to. And I don't have to pass any kind of parameters in. But if I do that, then it's not as reusable. So I like to make sure that anything that's not really critical to the app, things that could change, like where I'm getting my data from or what the message is that triggers the data to change, I like to bind that in into the parameters and the scope of the actual directive. So interacting with local storage is actually kind of easy, but doing it in a modular and angular service type of way, it's kind of important. So how do you do that? Well, there's a library called Z Storage Whip that I wrote. It's up on GitHub. It allows you to do methods like this to stash it, to get a summary, to clear it. It's all pretty simple. And you can access that right here at this URL. And in conclusion, I just want to say, you know what? Find a good pair programming partner, like a guy here with a bald cap on who's uh, running around the conference, acting like a crazy man. Have a lot of fun working with Breeze and Angular. I think it's a lot of good stuff. And if you want to see more about this, you can check out my course right here at Pluralsight or Joe Weems' great course called Angular Fundamentals. Thanks for coming.